Hello everyone. Before I start, I just want to thank all of you for the support on my second latest video, which has absolutely skyrocketed in views, and for helping GNU Lectures reach almost 3,500 subscribers. I do apologise for the lack of recent content as I've been very busy, but I have been posting to my second channel, Not Napoleon, so if you're interested in random non-tech stuff, then do check out that channel. So in today's video, we're going to be having a look at something quite interesting. This is the Vision 5 II. Although this may just look like another single board computer, there is something quite unique about this. This is a RISC-V computer. Before we get started, I need to clarify that this video is not sponsored by Star5, and for the new folks here, I am by no means a professional reviewer, I'm just a bloke who likes experimenting with tech, electronics and DIY stuff. To understand what RISC-V is and why this computer is special, we need to look at what an instruction set is. An instruction set architecture, or ISA, is the set of instructions that allow a CPU to perform tasks such as reading from memory and performing calculations. Since the instruction set determines a CPU's basic functionality, a program written for one instruction set will not run on another, unless it is recompiled or there's some form of emulation going on. Most instruction sets are considered either CISC or RISC by design. An example of a CISC instruction set would be the x86-64 processors made by Intel and AMD. If you're watching this video on a laptop or desktop, the chances are it has an x86 processor. An example of a RISC instruction set would be ARM. Historically, this has been the standard for smartphones, tablets, routers, and most single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi. In recent years though, ARM has been making its way into laptops, desktops, and servers. Although I'm not going to get into the details why, because this video isn't about ARM, it's about RISC-V. There are also some more niche instruction sets, which I'd like to speak about in another video, but I don't know if that would be too boring or not. As you can probably tell from the name, RISC-V is a RISC instruction set, and it's fairly new compared to x86 and ARM, with this development beginning in 2010. And what makes it special is the fact that it's an open standard instruction set, while most other instruction sets are proprietary. ARM licenses are leased out to companies like Apple, Rockchip and Qualcomm, while x86 is governed by a power sharing agreement between Intel and AMD. RISC-V isn't limited by patent restrictions or licensing fees, so anyone can make a processor using it. Perhaps one of the most exciting announcements surrounding RISC-V is the fact framework are making a RISC-V mainboard, meaning we could see RISC-V laptops be a thing at some point. In terms of the Vision 5.2's hardware, we have a Star 5 JH7110 quad-core SoC. It's available with either 4 or 8GB of RAM, and I got the 4GB model because it's a bit less expensive. It's got four USB ports, all of which are USB 3.0, which is nice to see. We've got a HDMI port, an audio jack, two gigabit Ethernet ports, one of which has PoE. We have a microSD card, an eMMC module, and an M.2 key. And in traditional SBC fashion, we have GPIO pins. So I'm really impressed in terms of how much IO we have at our disposal. Due to the M.2 key on the bottom, this thing tends to rock about a bit. But that's not a big deal because this thing also came with plastic pegs in the box. It's similar in size to a Raspberry Pi, but a bit wider and a bit taller. Just like with most ARM SBCs, you have to use images made specifically for the Vision 5.2's hardware. The reason for this is because unlike an x86 computer, there's no traditional BIOS or UEFI. So if you flash a generic RISC-V image, it won't boot. There's no Windows or Mac OS support for RISC-V like there is with ARM, but since I'm a Linux user, it doesn't make any difference to me. After connecting everything up and flashing a microSD card with the appropriate image, I turn the thing on and we get a blank screen. Initially, I thought I'd mess something up when flashing the image, but it turns out these switches have to be in a certain position to select the boot media. After fixing that though, we have life. Very exciting. And I finally got a proper capture card. Someone suggested it in the last video, and I agree because the quality just isn't as good when you're pointing a camera at your monitor. Especially when you don't have very good lighting to begin with. Anyway, I'm using the minimal Debian image for the Vision 5.2, which uses the GNOME desktop. I wasn't too sure what the default password was, 
but after a bit of trial and error, I realised it was star 5, all lowercase. Chris from Explaining Computers made a video about the Vision 5 II around a year and a half ago, and at the time, the UI seemed to be quite sluggish, and it was likely due to a lack of good video drivers. Here though, things are a lot better. Now things don't load as quickly as they do on a regular computer, or even a Raspberry Pi, but judging by the overall smoothness when dragging Windows around, we do seem to have proper GPU drivers, which is really nice considering this is still a very niche piece of hardware. I was even able to increase the display's refresh rate, but you probably can't tell the difference over YouTube, and it makes the OBS output look a bit fuzzy, so I changed it back to 60. Since it uses the Wayland version of GNOME, you can also install Sway if you want a more minimal desktop. One thing that is kind of annoying is the fact the root partition is only 4GB out of the box, even though the microSD card I was using is 128GB, though I was able to increase the partition from the command line to make use of all the drives available space. Now let's launch Firefox, which takes a while but does work. I should point out that this thing isn't great in terms of price to performance, but it's cool if you just want to experiment with RISC-V. And let's see if we can watch a bit of YouTube. Let's watch this GNU Lectures guy. Let me know if you folks have heard of him before. And it runs pretty well at 720p, which is the native resolution of this video. Admittedly, I am cheating a bit by using Invidious instead of YouTube.com, but YouTube is a very bloated website, and to be frank, I just don't have that much patience. And of course, there's an unspoken question when it comes to any device. Can it run Doom? It certainly can. I mean, if a computer can't run Doom, it's not a real computer. I ran this thing at 640x480 and got a solid 60fps. Anyway, that's all for today. One thing I will point out is about the M.2 slot on here. So I added a 240GB SSD to this thing, and it is recognised by the system, but out of the box, this thing doesn't support booting from an SSD. Now, it is possible to get it working, but it's a bit finicky and I'm going to look more into it off camera. However, the integrated EMMC and M.2 slot mean this thing could prove to be a very neat little NAS. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, cheerio!